I'm introducing the brand new 2008 Mini Cooper S to the channel here. What's up everybody, Superworks fan here for mini weekly update number five on this Friday. So uh, first I want to say before I give updates on the mini, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you that voted for me for the Mustang contest. I know like they took forever to process my entry and so that's why I didn't realize it was finally processed until that morning and we had until noon to vote. So it was literally like four hours, you guys got me into second place, which is insane. So thank you guys so much for all your voting and those of you that were on top of it and like watched the video in the first few hours and were able to vote, that was awesome. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate all your support and everyone's nice messages hoping that I win it. Uh, that'd be very sweet for sure. Some people have asked what would I do with a Mini if I won the 2015 Mustang. And uh, I definitely keep this still as a winter car and uh, would probably still commute in this. Uh, you know, I work part time in a place where I commute. A fairly long distance and so you know the Mustang wouldn't be very good on gas so I'd keep this as a commuter car keep the Mustang mostly as you know like a weekend car and nice day car during the week and uh, just keep it like that but it'd be a lot of fun so uh, fingers crossed the announcement is on June 29th at 8 o'clock on BET so uh, watch the awards show and uh, hopefully uh, I win it'll be interesting <laughs> So, what's new with the Mini? Well, uh, first thing, if you watched uh, the video this past week, I did autocrossing in this car for the first time. I never did it in the BRZ. I always kind of wanted to, but I was worried about burning through tires, and I really had no good reason not to do it, aside from I didn't want to pay the entry fee and things like that, and it was something I'd never done before, and I was nervous about it. But this event in Columbus that I was at this weekend, it was free, and I had already ridden around the track a couple of times, so I knew the layout, so I was more comfortable with it. And it was a lot of fun. It was really, really cool. Especially in the Mini, you know, being like a go-kart, basically, it's, uh, you know, there's less ways to screw up in this car because it's front-wheel drive. The BRZ, if I, you know, went too hot, I would have, you know, spun out or something. This, you just understeer and that's it. So it's uh, not quite as nerve-wracking, but it still was tons of fun in the Mini for sure, and I actually kind of want to do it again sometime. But there is actually something new with the car this week. I added something, and that is Bluetooth audio streaming. So uh, the BRZ had Bluetooth audio streaming. On. I loved that. That was a really nice thing. And I missed that in this car because this car, obviously being 2008, didn't have that. And um, it has the auxiliary port here and the USB jack, uh, but it didn't even have the iPod adapter. I bought an iPod adapter off of Amazon, and then I bought this cool little thing called an MPOW uh, Bluetooth adapter. And basically, it's for any kind of old-fashioned iPod docks. You can just plug this in and then do Bluetooth audio streaming through them. And so I just did that combined with the iPod cable from Mini. And and I was able to have wireless, you know, Bluetooth audio streaming through this car. So now I can listen to my music on my iPod in my pocket, just leave it in the pocket, and it just plays it wirelessly. So uh, that's really nice to have that again, because that was something that was definitely a downgrade I didn't enjoy about going from the BRZ to this. And I obviously have Bluetooth through the car still, you know, just for making phone calls and things like that. But it's nice to have it now for the uh, music as well. So that's uh, the new thing. I also added a little uh, phone charger, obviously, because... Uh, I have an older iPhone with a battery that doesn't hold a charge very well, so I added a phone charger as well. But uh, yeah, so um, just something you know, little to just make this car a little uh, more media friendly. So uh, yeah, but that's it for all the new updates on the Mini guys. So I'll send it back to me at the news desk for this week's news. Right, so for this week's news, the first thing is a rumor that I really hope is true, and that is that they're saying, you know, the Demerex concept that we saw uh, about a year ago it was so beautiful and everyone wanted that for the production WRX, they're saying that that styling could influence the new Impreza in the next generation of the WRX. So, um, you know, as we all know, yes, the current WRX is a totally new car, but it still is slightly based on the Impreza. It still has the same exact window shape as the Impreza, and so it, you know, the current Impreza isn't very sexy looking, and so it, it, you can only do so much with the WRX to make it look better because of just the general shape of the car. And so, you know, with these four-door coupes being so popular these days, I think that Subaru wants to get in on it, especially with the Impreza, which is, you know, 
currently very pedestrian and boring looking, kind of, you know, jazzing up the next generation of the Impreza to compete with stuff like the Toyota Corolla, which frankly looks a lot more aggressive, which is sad, uh, considering that, you know, it's like Toyota Corolla, but that looks more aggressive than the current Impreza, so, you know, they're saying that they want to kind of make the next Impreza a lot more sporty looking, and so that will benefit hopefully the new WRX that we get in three or four years, or whenever this new version comes out, that it's going to have this more aggressive styling. So, don't hold your breath, but there may be hope that we'll finally get a beautiful WRX one day. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> don't get too excited about that, just a rumor, but it would be nice if it became true. Other Subaru news is congratulations to Mark Higgins. He set a brand new Isle of Man record um, in the brand new 2015 STI. Uh, he broke his previous record. He was the previous record holder, and he broke his own record. And, uh, I mean, his average speed was insane. I mean, they, he clocked it at an average speed of 116 miles per hour, and uh, he did it in 19 minutes, 26 seconds, which is, beats his previous record of 19 minutes and 56 seconds. So he beat it by 30 seconds in the newer version of the STI here, which just goes to show, I mean, they obviously tinkered with this car a little bit. It's not totally stock, but very close to it, and it just shows just how, better, how much better the new STI is. Is, even though it has the same power as the previous one. While we're talking about power, uh, some other BRZ and FRS news now, uh, and that is, you know, I talked about the Cosworth package, um, you know, Cosworth doing these power packages to uh, bump up the power for the BRZ and the FRS, and um, there's some more details now that we have about it with a full 1.3 stage kit, which is basically just helps the car breathe better, so it gives it a slight tune and a full um, headers and full exhaust system. And it's 2800 bucks, which isn't cheap for the stuff you're getting, but it is Cosworth quality after all, and uh, so that says a lot. And uh, But yeah, so that'll give you 230 horsepower total. Um, but they're doing, they said they'll have packages in the future that'll bump it up to 325 horsepower for a street one, and there's a track version that'll do 380 horsepower. Still not a lot of details as far as what they're going to do to and you know get those high horsepower numbers. Probably forced induction, but you never know. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, just few more little details about that. Hopefully we'll find out more in the future about these higher performance versions of the Cosworth, BRZ, and FRS. Next bit of news is a mini, uh, I talked about this, there was some spy shots of a four-door Cooper S that they had running around, and it's been officially released. They're going to do this hard top four-door, it's just going to be a Mini Cooper that just actually has four doors instead of two. So instead of the Countryman and all these other higher ones that they've had in the past, they're doing just the normal small little Cooper but with four doors now, which I think is a great idea. It looks really good, it translates well, I think it's going to be a lot more practical and it'll help increase the sales of the Mini a lot. So uh, glad to see that and uh, it's only like a thousand bucks extra over the normal two-door version. So not bad at all and uh, probably going to have the same motors you know, that you get in the standard uh, Mini Cooper S, but just very cool. I think it looks really good. Other mini news is uh, the Subleger concept that I talked about last week that's so beautiful. Uh, they're actually considering doing a production version. That wouldn't be cheap. They're thinking around 35,000 euros if they made it. Uh, there's no word about whether they would still have an electric engine in it or if it would be uh, gasoline. Honestly, just make something that is very closely resembles the concept. Just throw the standard Mini Cooper S engines in it and call it a day. You don't need to go crazy with power plants and make it crazy expensive. Just use the same cheap power plants you have in the standard minis and have this awesome body style. I think that would be amazing. I would actually really want one of those, I think, if they came out, especially with that center fin and everything. It's just a really cool looking car. They even did a little rendering of what a production version could look like and it looks really good. So. Uh, Hopefully they make that. That would be awesome. Apparently they're getting a lot of good support recently about that, so uh, hopefully they decide to make it. So one big thing that made a lot of waves this week uh, as far as uh, automotive news is talk about the Ford Mustang's curb weight for the 2015 car. Now, to give you a little background, Ford claimed probably a year ago that the new 2015 Mustang would be two to 300 pounds lighter. That was the goal they were going for. This car was supposed to be lighter than the previous car, which got everyone excited because, as you all know, whenever you lower the weight in a car, the performance always gets better. The fuel economy gets better. Everything is better about a lighter car. And so that was getting everyone all excited about the new Mustang. And then the, the, there's a tuner called Steeda. They do, they're famous for a lot of Mustang stuff they've done. They claimed to have a 2015 Mustang that they were doing modifications on to, you know, make new parts for. And they said, well, it looks like there's going to be a big disappointment. And the car has actually gained two to 300 pounds, which made everyone flip out and uh, was not good news. And, um, but then they went back and like, oh, well, we were just guessing that that's the weight gain. We're not totally sure. Um, but it does look like, yes, it probably will gain some weight, but probably not that much. 
Other people are saying it might be 50 to 75 pounds additionally, um, which I mean, you have a car that's going to be a little bit wider than the previous Mustang and it has an independent rear suspension now. All that stuff adds extra weight. So without some big weight cutting stuff, it probably will get a little heavier, which is disappointing, but somewhat expected. Um, but Ford still hasn't officially announced anything, so they're either trying to surprise us with good news or they're trying to hide bad news. I don't know, but they're totally silent on the issue. We still don't even know how much horsepower the engines put out in this car. Um, they said it'd be slightly improved over the 2014 models, um, but no one knows. Um, so we still don't have any specs as far as any of that stuff goes. Hopefully Ford will finally just give us all the information on this car soon so we won't have to have any of these guessing games and rumor wars anymore. While we're talking about the 2015 Mustang, though, even though people don't know how much horsepower it's going to have, uh, it's been a huge hit already in Europe. Apparently the first 500 European Ford Mustangs were reserved in 30 seconds. 30 seconds, 500 people in Europe already reserved a Ford Mustang. So I don't know how many they're up to now, but that's, inc that's just crazy. It's incredible. So, uh, I mean, you know, the Mustang has never been officially offered in Europe, and so for this being the first one and so many Europeans loving the Mustang, uh, that comes as no surprise to me, but that's still really impressive. Other Ford news is uh, Ford is building this sweet thing. Um, it's only available in Brazil, unfortunately. It's called the Troller T4. And some people are saying it's the revival of the Bronco. Me, personally, it reminds me of the Toyota FJ Cruiser and all those kind of cars. It's very rugged. It almost could be like a Jeep Wrangler uh, competitor if Ford decided to bring it to America. Um, you know, Brazilian market, I don't know, you know, what kind of safety standards they have as far as the differences there, but it'd be really sweet if they brought that here to America. But, uh... Pretty sweet little car that Ford's building down in Brazil. Some more rumors now. Uh, the first is that the, the Ferrari 458 Italia could be getting a refresh here for 2015 or 2016, and they could be turbocharged. So, you know, they did the refreshed version of the Ferrari California, which is now called the California T, which has a turbocharged engine. And that car, it's more of a Grand Tour, so it doesn't have to have the screaming V8 sound that the 458 does. So they can get away with the turbo engine, but people are really worried that the new 458, you know, if they do do a turbo engine, it's not going to sound as good. Um, and they're saying they're going to be playing around with an advanced uh, exhaust system to still make it sound really good. It'll be interesting to see. I think Ferrari is probably the best as far as exhaust notes in the world, so if anyone can master a beautiful sounding turbocharged V8, I think they can. So hopefully they come up with something and it sounds even sweeter than the standard naturally aspirated car, but that's going to be tough to do. They definitely have their work cut out for them. Uh, other turbo news is Porsche is considering a turbo for the new GT3 RS. So, you know, they have this sweet, sweet motor that rests at 9,000 RPMs in the current GT3. And that motor, they say they've pushed it about as far as it can go. Um, doesn't, I mean, it doesn't come as much of a surprise. So they're saying if they want to have more power in an RS version, they're going to have to probably do turbocharging or something to increase the power because they can't do it naturally aspirated for a streetable car, I guess. Um, so uh, they're saying they're considering a turbo... Typically, a turbo GT car was always called the GT2, so they don't know if this is just working on a GT2 car or if it's, um, you know, they're just, that's the only way they're going to be able to add more power to the GT3 RS. But uh, very interesting to hear about that. And uh, other uh, turbo news is Porsche is also working on four cylinder turbos. Uh, you know, this is stuff, I mentioned this in the past about how they're, you know, testing these out in the new Boxster and the Cayman here. And um, they're saying the engines could range anywhere from 1.6 liters to 2.5 liters. Uh, right now, the confirmed ones that they're definitely probably going to have in production cars are going to be a 2 liter and a 2.5 liter. Um, and so, but they're saying they could even get this 1.6 liter up to 210 horsepower, which in a lightweight car like the Boxer wouldn't be a bad performer still. But um, they're saying the 2 liter would do around 286 horsepower, which is a pretty good healthy you know, you know amount of power considering the 2 liter turbo in the new Dever X does 268 horsepower so having you know a few extra ponies out of the Porsche is pretty impressive but Subaru take note they have a two and a half liter uh, engine here that you know Porsche is doing and uh, turbocharged they're getting 260 horsepower out of it I realize that the EJ25 and the STI is an old motor but it shows a two and a half liter turbocharged engine can do much more than 305 horsepower safely. And Porsche is showing us that they can do 360 out of this two and a half liter. So that's cool to hear. Um, hopefully they won't totally ditch the naturally aspirated cars for the Boxer and Cayman. But uh, definitely you can see turbocharging is the future. Everyone's looking into it here. So uh, very interesting news. Right, so the next bit of news here is uh, 
something that's car related but not about a car manufacturer. This is about car shopping. And Edmonds did a study here of about a thousand people and uh, just asked them, you know, what they like and don't like about the car buying experience. And nine out of ten said that they hate the haggling part of the uh, car buying experience. So, you know, Saturn back in the day, they had no haggling. People loved that. Scion has no haggling, and I guess people really like that as well. People really do not like haggling. They hate haggling so much that people said they'd be willing to give up sex for a month rather than haggle for a car. And so, I mean, that's how much people hate it. They said they would give up sex for a month. Other people said they'd be willing to give up Facebook completely. 44% said that. 29% said they'd happily turn their cell phones over for a weekend in order to not have to haggle for a car. So people will seem to be able to go to extreme lengths to not haggle for a car. They really hate it that much. And people, a lot of people don't even like the car buying experience in general. And um, so a lot of these people that they surveyed, they said they would rather do taxes, sit in the DMV waiting area, or sit on an airplane's middle seat rather than go buy a car. They hate buying a car that much that they would rather do taxes and all these other things. Which seems kind of crazy. I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of you ask me for car buying advice, and uh, a lot of you don't enjoy going to car dealerships and things like that. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm we're into cars, and you guys are into cars, so maybe us, we don't mind it that much. But apparently the non-car enthusiast public just hates going to car dealerships. And I think it's really funny that they're going to these extreme lengths that, you know, that they would just, they would rather do all these horrible things than not buy a car. So it's a... Uh, Really funny to see, so I uh, just thought it'd be worth mentioning, just a funny little story. Next is uh, some news about the Lamborghini 595 Zagato, which is a car I talked about last week. I thought it was a good looking car, but a lot of you said no, it's hideous, you did not like the way it looks, and I appreciate your feedback on that, that was funny to hear, and uh, but apparently a lot of people do like this Zagato, because uh, I guess Lamborghini is considering a limited production run of them, uh, maybe five or six cars, uh, because there's been good response about it, and people really like it. And, you know, with the way these limited Lamborghinis go, people like them because it's just very limited and you can't get one. You know, it's very few numbers, and so it's this exclusivity thing that people really like. And uh, so, yeah, they're saying they're considering doing a version of that. Other Lamborghini news here is saying that Lamborghini is working on a Huracan Super Trofeo. So, you know, obviously they have the Super Trofeo Racing Series, and they've had the Gallardos in it for a while, and they're obviously readying the race car version of the Huracan here to race in the Super Trofeo Series. And um, so they're just working out on a track. This is official news here. It's just a matter of when. So uh, should be you know coming out here soon. They don't have to do a whole lot of modifications to the standard car to make it race ready. But uh, yeah, so you'll soon be able to get a Super Trofeo version of the Huracan if you're interested in racing. Other news is uh, I talked last week about the Audi A7 and S7 that were updated with these new headlights and stuff. And they've also updated the RS7. So it has the same headlights, uh, same taillights, the same changes you get on the other two cars. And uh, so yeah, it's good to see that that's updated for the RS7 as well. Other news is uh, there was a, a Lexus RC coupe that's four doors that was spotted uh, running around. And um, so once again, everyone likes doing these four door coupes that have no practicality, but have four doors still. And um, you know, so I guess Lexus wants to get in on it as well, since BMW has the four series Grand Coupe they're gonna be doing and the six series Grand Coupe they already have. And, you know, Mercedes obviously have the CLA, and they're doing the CLS, and, you know, all these car manufacturers, you know, Audi has the A7, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so Lexus is planning on doing, you know, since the RC is just really beautiful, they're going to do a four-door version of it probably. It's going to be about the same size as the Lexus GS. Um, obviously, it's going to have way less interior space with this coupe design, but it's going to look cool, and that's what everyone seems to be interested in right now. So, uh, look for that probably in a year or two, I'm guessing. Another interesting rumor here is saying that uh, car company MG is considering a U.S. return. So they were here in America, you know, decades ago, and they had these cool little roadsters and things like that, obviously, that are now famous. And uh, MG is still around in the U.K., but here in America we don't have them. But they're considering a return, and I think they would have a place. You know, I think they're looking at Mini and things like that and how well they're doing, and so they're thinking they could do something similar. Um, you know, but... As, you know, they've also studied Alfa Romeo, who've tried to come back in the U.S. many times, and, you know, Fiat's not on the best of terms right now, you know, in the States here, so it's definitely a tricky thing to navigate and to be successful here in the States, so MG, they're just studying a return. They're not totally sure if they're going to do it or not, but it would be cool to see another car manufacturer in the fray over here, so I uh, hope that works out. Uh, talking about sales and whatnot, Volkswagen says that they're accelerating their U.S. model rollout because Volkswagen sales have been down for several months now. They're down by like 10%, I think, 
compared to last year. And so Volkswagen, they want big, big numbers. I mean, they're the people's car, and they want to just they want to sell 800,000 cars. I think they said um, by 2017 or 2018. I mean, and so they want to do that annually is 800,000 cars, which is a big, big goal. And now it seems like they're not going to be able to reach that. And uh, you know, I think you know the new GTI is going to be coming out. That's going to be cool. But the rest of their portfolio is a little stale right now. And I think they need to hurry. They say they need to hurry up and bring the new models out. So they're going to have a fresh Passat coming out soon. They're also going to be doing um, you know some other things here. This Cross Blue they're considering, and uh, you know I think the Beetle is going to be due for a few new models and things like that. So we'll see what they do. But um, yeah, Volkswagen is definitely trying to trying to scramble to uh, do something here to uh, get out of this funk that they're in. Other news is a. Uh, there's been these uh, Gran Turismo Vision uh, concept cars that are just video game cars. They're not even physical concept cars. These are just digital creations. So I haven't talked about them. They've been, there's been several car companies here debuting these cars over the past few weeks. And, um, you know, they're all cool looking. But, again, they're fake cars. They're not even real. So it's not worth really talking about. But the one that made waves this week is Mitsubishi released their Concept XR PHEV Evolution Vision Gran Turismo. Um, so, that's a mouthful. It looks amazing, and everyone's like, oh, maybe this will be the new Evo. But Mitsubishi is still saying they're not doing any kind of Evo in the future. Um, they're not interested in that kind of stuff. So this is just a fun concept that's going to be in a video game and nothing else. Um, but it would be cool. I mean, it looks amazing, and if they made that into some kind of production version of an Evo for an Evo 11, that would be amazing. But... Don't hold your breath for that for sure. But in other positive Mitsubishi Evo news, um, there's been a report here saying that the Evo is going to continue to be produced through 2015. So, I mean, everyone was worried, oh no, they're going to be discontinuing it. But it looks like you'll still be able to buy them for the 2015 model year here. I don't know how much supply there's going to be, but if you want an Evo, you'll still be able to buy one. Not sure for how much longer, though, but at least for one more model year. So that's good news to hear for all the Evo fans out there. Another report here, uh, McLaren says that they're going to go all hybrid within 10 years. So, as you know, the P1 has this sweet hybrid system, and they say they want to work it into a higher performance version of the MP4 12C, which is now the 650S. Um, and uh, also the P13, they're saying they want to do hybrid stuff. And so, apparently, within 10 years, all their cars in their model range are going to have some kind of hybrid tech similar to the stuff you see in the P1, obviously, it just with less power and things like that. So it's really cool. Um, you know, I think that that's definitely the future for supercars because you have instant torque with these electric motors and just gives you this insane sensation of power. And uh, so that's really cool to uh, see they're going to have that in all their cars here in the next 10 years. So uh, that's going to be sweet. Other sweet news is Hyundai, uh, they, in Korea, they launched this concept car of a, it's a mid-engine Veloster. So, you know, the Veloster is kind of in a funky shape, but it had a large hatchback and they were able to fit a mid-engine, uh, you know, layout for this car here. So it has, you know, I think the same engine that you get out of the WRC car, and um, they're just throwing that into uh, the Veloster here. 296 horsepower, and it's mounted behind the two seats. So, I mean, it loses the back two seats, but it's a really sweet car. So, uh, I mean, they say they're not producing this. This is just for fun. But come on. I mean, if you can do it, do it. I mean, a mid-engine Veloster would be so sweet. So, uh, yeah, we can keep dreaming about that. Some other uh, Hyundai news that's not really the best is the 2015 Hyundai Genesis Coupe is going to not have a turbocharged four-cylinder anymore. They're only doing V6s, which seems really strange considering the trend is for everyone to be doing turbocharged four-cylinders, including Porsche. And yet Hyundai says they're going for this big old V6 instead. They want to do this you know, 3.8 liter V6 is the only option. I don't know if the turbo motor wasn't selling well or what, but that seems totally backwards to what all the other car companies are doing. Not sure why. Uh, there's going to be a few other refreshing things about this car here for 2015. They're going to be you know, switching it up to make it a little bit uh, fresher than the current model. But that just boggles my mind as to why they're getting rid of the Turbo 4. But uh, that's what they're saying here. Other McLaren news is uh, McLaren is planning a P13 GT. So what that means is they said all along these P13s, you know, the 911, it's going to have... Uh, you know, the coupe and convertible, and uh, they said they're going to be additional body styles, though. And so this additional body style, they're saying they're going to do a shooting brake style, similar to the Ferrari FF, and that's really sweet to hear, because uh, shooting brakes always make everyone weak in the knees. They're saying it would look about similar to, like, an E-type with the way the hatch would be in the back there. I don't think it would have back seats, but it would have more trunk room and things like that. And that sounds really exciting. So um, another good idea for McLaren. That's sweet. And lastly, uh, BMW's uh, new X6 was leaked today, and uh, 
it looks nice, um, you know, it just looks like an X5 without the, you know, usability of the X5, and so it has this sloping roof line here. Uh, it looks good though, you know, it's aggressive, and um, yeah, I don't know, in this color that they have for these pictures, I don't think it looks the best in that color, but it is a good looking car though, I think, and um, yeah, apparently, you know, these things are all the rage, these coupe crossovers, so I'm sure that'll sell very well, not sure why, but I'm sure it will. So yeah, that's it for all the news this week, guys, so send it back to me in the car. Alright, so I'll leave you guys with a nice little acceleration here, like I always do. But this car is in full throttle, this wheel likes to jerk a little bit, it's lots of fun, and uh, yeah, definitely sweet. I know there's no exhaust sound or anything, but it still is tons of fun. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next week, take care.